well, people are looking just saying, God, I, we can't have a guy like David Clown. He says, I'm going to knock you out in this round, and he does it. This can't be true. It's absolutely, you know, disastrous. But he changed. I mean, he changed everybody's idea about what heavyweight boxing could be. Surely, because people have, the typical heavyweight box, the heavyweight champion of the world is a symbol of the strongest man in the world. Even though we have power lifters, weight lifters, we I mean, the heavyweight champion in the world. First thing, he's the strongest person in the world. He can knock anyone out. He's a very serious individual. He's supposed to be an idol to the kids. He's supposed to never do anything wrong, which they are right. But people like him changed the course of history. Ali's greatest moment in Zion. He still had one or two good fights left in him. The thriller in Manila with Joe Frazier in 1975. And that very close encounter in New York with Ken Norton, who always was a problem to him. He once broke Ali's jaw. But the fight he never should have taken was the 1980 mismatch with the new champion, Larry Holmes. Ali was finished, and Holmes, in the end, became almost reluctant to hit him. Holmes was once Ali's sparring partner. Now, he was a good champion. I think he's a tremendous fighter. He says things that sometimes he should hold his tongue on and shouldn't be said, but I guess that's his nature, to say things and speak that way derogatory about something. up there with some of the best, doesn't he? Very great fighter and a very, you know, the pr a privilege to have him come from our country, and I'm a great fan of his. And there's some talk down the line that he would like to come out of retirement, and it would be an honor and a pleasure, and I'll be charmed to do battle with him. Actually, it's, it's wonderful to talk to you because you obviously have a, a tremendous knowledge of boxing. Are there any old-time British fighters that uh, you are particularly keen on that you've seen on film? Coming here, I was hoping that I would give an intellection where most of the British boxing fans fans don't have an understanding of guys like Owen Moran or the great Ted Kid Lewis. Do you, you, know, know, you know about Owen Moran, do you? Masterful, classy boxer. It's a shame that he never became champion. I love watching the fight. He was so ahead of the time. It's hard to believe. That he, he went to America champion. around about 1906, 1907, yeah. and he fought men like A. Battelle, who were great fighters. Great A. Battelle. He got two draws with it, And I get to watch him box and do the movement, the lateral movement. I was like, I watched him knock out Batlin Nelson. And I was like, God, this is unbelievable. This is English guy fighting like this? But it's just so classical, but American style. It's amazing. It's and he was good. He never won a title. Not even a British title. Mm -hmm. Amazing, no. no. And because, well, he went to America and did a lot of his fighting there, isn't it? Because perhaps the money was there, and that's why he went, right? For the income. I knew Ted Kid Lewis. I knew him quite really? well, because he lived to a, a fair old age. Perhaps the greatest fight ever came out of here. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, even though you have Lunningan, you know, but you read a fight on his longevity. And for years, Take It Lewis has been beating the greatest American fighter. Mm -hmm. For years, he's been the number one in the world for years. Not just like he, he won the title like four times, three times, and it's just mm -hmm. unbelievable. And the guys he had to fight Jack Britton, Mickey Jack Walker, Britton. Benny Leonard, the who's who of boxing back then, the greatest of the greats, and he still prevailed number one. You see, Lewis was another of those men who went up through the weights. He was British featherweight champion. He was early uh, days. George Carpentier, I have the footage of George Carpentier. Yeah. Yeah. The referee struggling to break the two men. The referee says break clean. A tremendous right by Georges Carpentier. Lewis is down. I don't know what it's feeling. I never read his feelings about the fight, but I'm sure you know. He got up, Carpentier went to help him up. He and he said, get off me. I don't need your help. Well, you complained to the referee. He, he, he turned hand. away to the referee and got hit. Well, you know, that was his mistake. He shouldn't have done that. And Carpentier is the kind of gentleman that would take full advantage of something like that. We had another very good fighter. Well, I say we had. He's still with us today. Jack Kidberg. He beat Kidjarvely. He fought Kidjarvely. Mm -hmm. I remember. He fought Cantonary. I'm a Cantonary. Stop him for the junior. Mushy Kalan. I remember. He was a champ. Junior yeah. Waterway champ. Junior Waterway champ. So we've had one or two good ones in this country, mate. And uh, I want to be proud of. We hope we might find one suitable to fight you. As I say, <laughs> I love this country, and it would be a pleasure. Well, we have Mr. Bruno. I would like to see a little bit of footage of him. We've got sure. some. Surely, one We've got some stuff for Frank here. Now, I think these shots. This is in the jacuzzi in America. 
And uh, I think this is when he was over in America, when you sparred with him, when you were very young. What, 15? Well, can I, just, I can remember. It wasn't, um, I don't think I was there at this particular time because I remember I wasn't in Jacuzzi. When we were in Jacuzzi. I was like 16 at the time, but I remember I wasn't in Jacuzzi. And he had the unbelievable physique. What do you make of a physique like that? Is that a, a, so many people here say, well, it's not a fighter's physique. It's more of a weightlifter's physique. What do you think? Well, you know, he feels comfortable that way. But I think it's tremendous. He has a tremendous feeling. You don't do anything like that at all? Not at all. Nothing at all. Unbelievable, I think. But for me, I, I, just, I don't get into weights. I, I just like to work out, run, train, do the exercise, calisthenics, mm. and pause. This is by Leroy Caldwell. You, you probably met him. He's from the state American mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Terry Lawless, the Frank Bruno, is really what Castamato was to you. He's like, he's like a father to Frank. And it's good that, you know, Fighters nowadays, like Frank, and I was fortunate to have someone like that. that cares about you know to win in a kind of business where you know we use the meat wagons. You know, no one really cares, you know, because you have to believe we draw these kind of people. People in our business, we draw these kind of people. You and he seem to get on pretty well together. I think it's the respect that fighters have for each other. Oh, I, I like Frank. He's a very good man. You know, I like that he's a gentleman. And I respect fighters as a gentleman. You know, they grow fighters in the ring. I respect that. To be in the ring is different. But to be outside the ring, to be a gentleman. Because people consider boxers a stereotype. Uh, they just rock dumb guys, no class, can't speak. And well, in America, they just, you know, just dummies. And the other day they do is fight. And when you meet gentlemen like Frank and myself and other fighters that conduct themselves well, you know what I mean? You gain respect for them. There's no question that the British boxing public would love to see a Tyson-Bruno championship fight. In March, when Bruno forced James Quick Tillis to quit, that possibility came a little closer. Tyson was there to see it for himself. If Bruno keeps winning and Tyson stays champion, it could come about in 1988. Meanwhile, in Mike Tyson, boxing has a new, young and respected heavyweight champion. A student outside the ropes, a savage inside them. 